Sure, sure. So my name's Robin. Uh, my Japanese name is Endo Takashi. So I'm actually half Japanese, half English. Um, I was born here in, in Japan. And then uh, I've grown up between the UK, Japan, uh, Hong Kong uh, for many, many years. And then I came back here uh, in 2011, most recently because of the 2011 tsunami uh, and Fukushima nuclear crisis. So that was the kind of the, uh, the turning point which made me come back to Japan. Um, and I've been based here since then, um, working a lot in with like climate change, with uh, natural disasters. So that that whole uh, disaster and up in Tohoku really changed my perspective on many, many things. Um, and so now, yeah, I'm working on, on various things, mainly with climate change, with disasters, but also with uh, environmental issues like plastic consumption as well. And that's where the whole My Music Project comes into this, into this wow. story. Wow. So I, I didn't realize that. So you came back because of the... Tohoku disaster. Were yes. you active, active volunteering, or you're coordinating? Yeah. What were you doing for yeah. that? So my mother's family is originally uh, generations ago from Sendai, from Miyagi Prefecture. So there was quite okay. a strong kind of ancestral tie to the area. Um, but yeah, I was up there from about April 2011, so about uh, three weeks a month after the the, the disaster. Um, and I was just I was helping out as a volunteer, you know, helping out. Uh, clean up homes, uh, look after children in, in the uh, in the emergency centers, giving out emergency supplies. Um, and actually that became my career. So I was, I was a humanitarian aid worker for okay. uh, five, six years, um, based in Japan, but working mainly in um, places like Nepal, Haiti, um, Sub-Saharan Africa, and, and many, many places. So wow, that kind of awesome. made a whole shift. Yeah, and I never planned any of this stuff, but it just happened. Oh, so. fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> great, great way to see the world and and really yeah, yeah. get in touch with the local community too, right? Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But was actually, that... I, I was always drawn back to Japan because you know this uh -huh. talk was such an important um, moment in my life. You know, but being up there in 2011, and then I, I just kept coming back. So, so now uh -huh. I'm here in Tokyo. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's were, it in a were nutshell. You working with an international aid organization to do all the volunteer stuff, or? Yeah, I was, I was working uh, with a, an organization called Peace Boat. Um, I was there for about six or five, six years uh, in various capacities. But um, yeah, and that was my, my full time job for yeah, almost half a decade. Yeah. <laughs> Just quite well, looking back now, it's quite long, a long time. Wow. No, that's really great. What, <laughs> a, what a great way to see the world and, and give back to communities and do such worthwhile work. So that's awesome. Um, and then and then now in Tokyo, you're also doing social innovation in Japan as well. Or? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So I, I run uh, an organization with two of my my close friends called uh, Social Innovation Japan. And what we are is a, a platform for social good. So we do lots of conferences, events, workshops around social and environmental issues. And we're building this this community of people who are really, really passionate about these kinds of problems. Um, so far, we've had about 2,000 people take part in our various programs. Um, and we're rap well, hopefully rapidly growing. <laughs> we also work a lot with, uh, we're working more with companies to help them integrate um, social and environmental um, activities into their core business strategies as well. Um, as part also, of CSR or SDG project, yeah. like targets for the company? Oh, yeah, or? yeah. It's kind of a bit of both. I mean, there's some CSR components, but also more like CSV, kind of creating shared value and also okay. uh, working with the SDGs, the UN Sustainable Development Goals as well. Um, and we also do more and more content. So we write some articles. We, we're trying to launch a podcast. We're, we're kind of got various things in, in the pipeline related to content as well. Oh, really um, exciting. Thank you. Well, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> uh, it's, it's mostly yeah. it's mostly based in Tokyo, right? I mean, for people outside Tokyo, yeah. I'm praying you guys will start live streaming or offering some video of the talks or something yeah. because it's really hard for, you know, people outside yeah. Tokyo to take part. But what you guys no, are doing right. is so worthwhile and so wonderful. Right. Thank, you, Thank so you so much. much. No, yeah. we tried to live stream. We have live streamed before. Um, and we actually tried to live. We had an event two days ago call around uh, women and sustainability uh, we tried to live stream but there were some technical issues so we, we do live stream when we can um, okay so that we, we yeah we, we're very aware that you know we don't want to be too tokyo focused because there is so much stuff happening outside of tokyo as well right yeah but I right know. now it's just just a matter of capacity so we're trying to figure no. out how I to mean, expand yeah tokyo is where everything happens i understand <laughs> I, I was talking to um sarah jean risotto the other day yeah, do yeah, you know her yeah. of course, and yeah, she yeah, was yeah. she was saying um 
I, I've only ever lived in Tokyo, so I can't really say I'm from Japan, just Tokyo. It's a very, it's like a, a country of its own, right? <laughs> yeah, no, I fully agree with that. <laughs> but, you know, that's where everything happens. That's where all the international companies are, you know. So everybody around other parts of Japan is also always looking to Tokyo for what Tokyo is doing. Okay, let's do that. So you guys are really important base to be in Tokyo. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. But. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> talking talk specific, I'm big fan, big fan of everything you do. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, likewise, likewise. <laughs> oh, Checking out your website. Very, very interesting. Very cool stuff. That you're doing. I can't wait to collaborate more. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to talk about that later. Yeah. Um, so talking specifically about the Maimizu project, like how did you get the impetus to do it? How did you get the idea initially that it would be the best thing to do is make an app, start collecting? Like where did yeah. that come from? Okay. Um, so I guess it all started, you know, a few years ago because of my work, I was traveling all the time and, and I would see the plastic waste issue is a very, very serious issue in many countries around the world. Right. But when I came back to Japan, you don't really see the problem up, up close, right? You don't see plastic in the waterways. You don't see plastic in the ocean that much. Right. But then, uh, last year I went to, uh, Okinawa, um, for about a month and I, I saw it's such a beautiful place. Right. But I just remember you in seven... Okinawa, like Naha, in no, the main island. Kind of, I was in uh, Ishigaki, in oh, yeah, uh, the islands, Miyakojima, Miyakojima like, kind of on island hopping. I just quit my job, so I kind of went went a bit oh. wild. I had a great time going around. Oh, the Okinawa is great. I'm place. from I'm from Hawaii, so I oh, love really? going okay, to yeah. Okinawa. It's like old style <laughs> Hawaii. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah, and, and the, everything was stunning, but you know, there were there were many beaches that were completely just covered in plastic, and I thought this yeah. is—it's not a faraway problem, right? It's something that's—it's yeah. it's right, it's happening right here. And Definitely. even you, like even recently in the news, um, deer have been dying from ingesting plastic in Nara, right? I mean, this is yeah. like a crisis is happening right here on our front door. So I thought, right, there's got to be something that we can do. Um, leveraging technology and, and kind of innovation, to, you know, to tackle this problem. Um, so we thought, you know, Japan has, Japan is very lucky in that we have tasty, drinkable tap water. Yes. And yet we, we are consuming, you know, millions and millions of bottled water, uh, yep. of uh, bottles of water every day, right? It's completely insane. Um, so it makes, from an environmental perspective, it makes no sense. Um, yep. From a scientific perspective, there's basically zero evidence to show that um, mineral water, so-called mineral water, is actually better for you than tap water. Right? Sometimes I mean, just... they find tap is better, right? I mean, it's, yeah, it's just exactly. insane. So it, I, I think in like 10, 20 years, we'll look back and think, well, I cannot believe that, yeah. you know, we did this, right? <laughs> and I, But I have to say, it's not because people have bad intentions. It's just that's how our mindsets have formed, right? Like, it's, we... it's all it's... under the ruse of convenience. Right? Exactly, exactly, exactly. So our big thing is not to like um, say, oh, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that. It's We're not going with a negative angle. We want to make it fun and positive. Say, hey, look, yeah. sure, you can have a plastic bottle of water. That's fine. But why don't you can also refill and find all these new cafes and, you know, have a good time in a, uh, meeting someone uh, in a new business. And you know what I mean? Like we make it more fun. So that's the idea. Um, so we started mapping out all of the refill spots around Japan. Um, mm -hmm. That's like public places like water fountains in the stations, water fountains in uh, uh, other public facilities, as well as kind of more private places. And that means uh, cafes, restaurants, hotels, co-working spaces. Um, and we've been really, really just overwhelmed at the positive response we've had since launching um, oh, that's the project. Great. Um, and so the idea is um, right now we have about 8,000 uh, refill spots across Japan. Um, and awesome. we want to ex expand a lot more, um, especially coming up to the Olympics. You know, yeah. everyone's talking about sustainability, but this is, for me, a real tangible project that we can show to the world and say, hey, look, we are serious about sustainability. And this is one way that we can tackle um, specifically the issue around plastic consumption. Definitely. Definitely. And I, I was up in, a couple of weeks ago in Tokyo and I was really trying to be active. I had my water bottle and um, cycling around, walking around. It's hot and you're drinking so much water. Yeah. So even, yeah. even if you were buying bottles, you yeah. would have to buy like five a day or something. Oh, yeah. Easily. So yeah. 
it saves you money. You know, yeah. it, it tastes better because usually when you ask at a cafe or something, they give you ice water. I yeah, mean, yeah, exactly. If it was just <laughs> a little bit easier, if it was like water jugs in every hotel lobby, or yeah. you know, like yeah. it would, it would be great. So I think what you're doing to get it on an app that makes it more appealing for tourist offices, for hotels, for everybody to try to get in there and offer water to be on the app, right? So you're creating yeah. more appeal because tourists are going to be using it. Visitors exactly. are going to be using it. Athletes going to be using it. Everybody's going to use it, right? Exactly. And it's a complete win-win, right? For the, for the cafe, the restaurant, the hotel, they get increased foot traffic and yeah. giving out water costs virtually nothing. It is such a, a cheap commodity, right? So yeah. just giving out free water, and then as a result, you may in, you know, get a new customer, right? It's, yeah. it's super easy. And I think in Japan, especially, if I walk into a cafe and get free water, I'm likely to say, oh, I like the look of that cookie, or oh, that cake looks tasty, right? I'll go, you Definitely. know what, I'll have one of those. And that, yeah. that also helps the cafe and the restaurant in, in financial sense too, right? Of course, so, yeah. You know, it's sustainability, we're reducing plastic, People are hydrating much easier and cheaper, and we're also helping uh, businesses as well. So it's like a win-win-win, and it's, it's free for everyone. Definitely. Yeah. Even, like, I do consulting sometimes for hotels, yeah. and even in the room, they're still giving the plastic water bottle in yeah. the room. But then if you want to make tea, you're supposed to fill up from the toilet sink, usually. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know... <laughs> So yeah. I always suggest if you guys have a water filter on yeah. the floor or in the lobby and you have reusable bottles in the fridge or in the room, that would be such a branding thing, like high quality. Yeah. People would feel great about it. They can take your brand water bottle out when they travel around the city, which is exactly. free advertising. I yeah. mean, there's so many ways that you can use the concept that you guys are starting people mm. thinking about it. And it can expand into tourism, into business. You know, reusable yeah. is just the way to go. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And you usually get higher quality water, right? Mm. And actually, you know, regarding hotels, a lot of them are doing the uh the scheme where you if you don't want to wash your towels you can let the hotel know right and that helps yeah, reduce the, exactly. so, uh, the next step will probably be exactly like reducing plastic consumption whether it's plastic bottles or whatever and there are many hotels out there who are becoming much much more sustainable right um and even with the refill thing you know i, I believe uh, hilton uh, nagoya um has already you know started giving out free refills to people so you just walk in with your own bottle they give you a free refill and that's it. And like, if Hilton's doing it for me, then that means there's going to be many, many other hotels who will be joining the, the, the ranks as well. So um, I think this, in the next year, you know, one, two, three years, um, things are going to change really dramatically, especially if you look at the, the macro picture with plastic uh, waste being uh, banned in, in China. Like, you know, Japan used to send a lot of its plastic waste to China. Um, and there's been a whole kind of, there's been a lot of shaking up in terms of uh, plastic waste management. Um, things have to change on a very fundamental level. Um, yeah. But as I say, it's not like, oh, no, we're doomed. It's let's have fun and let's yeah. refill and let's make our lives better. And, and, and think like, about uh, how the quality is better and how you feel better yeah. having yeah. less weight, having to spend less money, right? So exactly. it's, it's yeah. focusing on the positive is definitely the way to go. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nobody likes to be told what to do, right? Uh, 100%, yeah, and that's what we really <laughs> don't want to do. We don't want to be like, you know, we want to be like, hey, cool, let's have a good time. Appeal <laughs> to their, their positive <laughs> side, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so how have you found any hurdles, like in getting the app started or starting new innovation? What are some of the challenges so far with um, like a startup type of innovation yeah. in Japan? Can you comment on that? <laughs> um, it's been a very busy couple of months because <laughs> I'm also working on, you know, uh, I have a job as well, <laughs> so I can do both. But um, yeah, it's it's been really exciting. I mean, developing the app, I have a wonderful team, um, really talented, super passionate, committed team uh, who are working incredibly hard on this. Um, and you know, it does get exhausting, but every time we get tired, we get someone sends a message saying, "Oh, this is so cool," or you know, someone sends us a, a photo of them refilling. You know, it's, it just people just keep us keep us going. Um, and honestly, yeah, the app is is almost ready for the the beta launch. We'll be launching very soon, um, and yeah, 
we've had, I would say, a few challenges in, in bringing on board cafes and, and restaurants. Okay. But actually, overwhelmingly, the, the, the response has been positive. Um, I'll give you one example. We went to a cafe the other day. Um, and we, we said, oh, we're doing this thing called My Mizu. It's, it's free. Do you, do you want to sign up? Um, and the owner was like, oh, well, that sounds great. But actually, we sell bottled water, right? I thought, okay, well, that, from that perspective, that makes 100% sense. Like, yeah, don't, don't worry. Um, and uh, so those, those kinds of things, when it, when it has a potential impact on the business, of course, that, that makes sense not to join. Um, but overwhelmingly, the, the, the cafes and the, the businesses that we've talked to um, have been very positive and they're like, oh, this is great. You know, yeah, we're happy to sign up. Um, and so, yeah, that's the next push. In, you know, the next five, six months will be to really, really increase that number of, of, of businesses on board the My Music platform. Yeah, good. Because I know like major chains like Starbucks, years ago, they used to have water jugs inside all the Starbucks for people yeah. to refill of their own. And yeah. then they took them away. And there was a rumor. I never heard it officially, but there was a rumor that they were worried about it becoming contaminated. But uh, I, yeah. I also noticed that around the same time, they started selling bottles of water. So yeah. It's it's hard to know. I mean, if you ask them at Starbucks, if you ask them for water, they will give it to you. Yeah. And and they will refill your reusable bottle as well if you really ask. Mm. Like, and also buy a coffee. But it, it's definitely <laughs> not as easy as it used to be. And it I'm really looking forward to when big chains yeah. get on board, you know. Right, and, right. You know, because there's there's some good um, companies in Japan that do the filtered water service as well, right? Like if you yeah. go to a noodle shop, you can see, is it Hoshizaki? They've got uh -huh. like a, a chain of like water filter cooled water refillable machines, right? Mm -hmm. And some places you see the sign that says, don't refill your suito, don't refill your water yeah. bottle, yeah. right? <laughs> and you're like, why i'm a customer you know but yeah so well, i guess there are there are some issues around hygiene um and risk management from a company perspective that we have to kind of navigate um but you know what's the, the beauty of this this project is we, there doesn't need to be any new infrastructure built like we already have the drinkable water we it's have there. apps we have filters yeah. all we need to do is just change mindsets and, and yeah. you know maybe create some kind of new culture where you know, if you see a My Music sticker in, in the in the window of a restaurant, you can just walk in and go, hey, can I have some free water? And they go, yeah, of course you can have free water. And that's it. There's, they, we don't need to spend any money. It's it's totally that's, free. We actually save awesome. money. Yeah. So, that, so just that's... focusing on the, on the good, on the positive, on the people who are willing to take part. And then eventually you're going to sweep everybody in, I think. That's the idea. Yeah, that's the, idea. That's the way to go. So, so you gave me some stats about sure, sure. um, 6,000 spots in Japan, was it? We have 8,000 at the moment. 8,000? Yeah. And that's all over Japan from, yes. yeah. from Okinawa Hokkaido, all the way to Hokkaido. Way. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And we've been and very lucky because people have been sending in, like, <laughs> you should see my inbox. I just get photos and, and descriptions of water fountains from all over Japan. They're like, hi, Robin. <laughs> uh, I found a beautiful, and I'm like, okay, this is great. You know, uh, my, oh, my life has changed dramatically in the past two oh months. But my yeah, my God. inbox is full of water fountains. <laughs> it must be so hard because, I mean, when I went through the, the system online and you have, like, the exact address, you have, yeah, yeah. like, a, a dropped pin or something. But that's so much work to put it, it is, into yeah. the app, right? And but then actually, once the app is launched, you're going to have people saying, there is no water fountain here or, you know, mm -hmm. like, it's the wrong location. Right. So, actually, in, in the app, you can add um, refill spots very easily. It nice. detects your, you know, uses GPS, so it knows exactly where you are. You just upload the photo and just write a few details if you like. So if I'm in the train station and I, and I see a beautiful fountain, take a picture, um, upload it, and just say, oh, it's on uh, platform two. You know what I mean? And so that yeah. way it's super easy. Um, and yeah, in terms of verification, that's a challenge. Um, but what we can do is the, uh, ultimately we want to have um, review systems where people can say, oh, this is a great, you know, place. Uh, this is a great cafe with icy, lemony water or whatever it is, right? And yeah. that way we can have like real time peer reviewed um, information about each water source. So if, if there's a, a water fountain on the database that is like, uh, that is getting negative reviews, we can either, we can remove it or we can fix the problem. So we want, you know, we really want to use everyone's knowledge and everyone's experience uh, and then crowdsource this kind of information. 
Yeah, that is awesome. Way to go. Um, <laughs> have you have you had any interest or anybody who runs that major map app that everybody uses? Have they <laughs> approached you guys? Are you doing a collaboration or? <laughs> I don't um, want to mention their name, but I know yeah. you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, not as of yet. We yeah. we've had some conversations with, conversations with with large companies uh, in the yeah. past few weeks. Um. So yeah, things are are, are kind of moving ahead quite quickly. Um, wow. But honestly, the focus for me right now is let let's develop the best product that we can. Um. Yeah. Let's get as many points on the map and let's get as many users um yeah. and then we can talk about all that stuff later on but for me yeah That's let's awesome. deliver the best product and then maybe big things will happen down the line but let's see yeah i i think there there must be so much potential there you know yeah. anyway especially I I mean, so. yeah. fingers crossed <laughs> thank you <laughs> and i honestly like just kind of zooming out a bit to the bigger picture you know from a global perspective um I, I currently work in in climate change specifically on on uh, climate resilience so one of the things that, that we look at look at for example is is water security and water scarcity right and yes. so many uh, cities around the world are currently experiencing water shortages yes. and the whole issue around what drinkable water is a massive massive uh, challenge yes. right and yes. so for me if, if we can grow this into a global phenomenon where yes. people are you know reviewing and adding water sources then this can be extremely valuable data for governments for private sector companies uh, and for people in general so the big goal is yeah let's let's nail it let's let's launch it and have a great time in the, the Tokyo 2020 Olympics um, yes. and then let's really go global and, and make this the world's most comprehensive and up-to-date uh, database. That's awesome. Is there a do you have a date when you're going to launch it? It was yeah the beta version is like imminent <laughs> uh i'll say it'll be this month what are we now it's it's uh august today? is it what, 20 seconds is it? 20 seconds so, yeah yeah so it'll be uh Eight let's say more days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully countable. let's say within this month or very early september okay yeah awesome Thank very exciting yeah <laughs> so when, once it's launched it'll be available at the app store for everybody to download is okay. it going to cost yeah. anything or it's a free app we, we don't want to charge anyone so um it will be uh free for the users what we're doing now is we're launching the beta version so that will be limited to maybe 50 or 100 people we want to get everyone's feedback and then improve 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 and then do the the main launch um sometime in, in a few months time so right. yeah we're going to just make it an exclusive uh usage now and then and that also build up the hype a little bit and then yeah. do a massive launch. Can I, can I be on the, the team? Oh, you're, 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 the you're on the A-list. Yeah, you're, you're way up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will good. definitely be reviewing it and hoping uh, about it and everything. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, and any advice to social entrepreneurs out there who are trying to stay motivated and you've, yeah. you've been doing it in Japan for a while? Yeah, um, yeah. Any advice to people who want to do a startup or try to work in a way that helps society or community or environment? I would say what's been really, really handy for me has been having a community of people. Um, so just, you know, meeting other people or spending time with people who are passionate about similar things or it doesn't have to be similar. It can also be completely different things. But just having like a community of people where you can share experiences and, and say, "Ah, oh, today this happened," or you know, "Today this happened." Having that kind of base is extremely important because it can be quite a tough journey doing this stuff, um, you know, financially, emotionally, all this stuff. Uh, but yeah, if you have a good group of people, I think everything becomes a lot easier. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Easy. No, it's perfect. <laughs> perfect. Thank you so much for talking today and uh, I'll let you know when I publish the post, I'll do a post on my website and uh, the video and I'll, I'll send so you links when it's all all done. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And keep up all the great work. I love, I really, uh, really love you. what you're doing. So, I hope yeah. we can meet face to face someday. I hope so too. Yeah.